For a very long time, I thought that writing music was one of those things you're either born with or you're not. And I was convinced that I was not born with it, that I could not write music. I mean, it was so hard for me to just learn songs, much less write them. But then I learned about my diatonic chords. Uh, more specifically, I learned how to use my diatonic chords. So that's what I want to teach you in this video. In this very short video, by the end of this, you will be able to write chord progressions that sound wonderful, that will work, that you can give to your band to play and actually start writing verse sections and choruses. Now, this will be fairly limited. We're only going to be working in major keys today. But most of the music we hear on a daily basis is in the major key. So this is really tackling like almost like 60 to 70% of Western music is going to be described just in this video. So even if you're already familiar with diatonic chords, I still suggest you watch this because I'm going to be putting some very funny restrictions on our playing, and that'll actually help us get better sounding progressions easier. Now, at the very end of this video, I do want to talk about how can we make things more complicated, how can we add in more theory, and also how can we get rid of the theory to just kind of let, let ourselves write intuitively instead of through these mechanical processes. I don't want to waste any time, I just like to get right into it by starting to write some chord progressions in our C major scale. To do that, we need to start on the note C. From there, we have a formula of whole steps and half steps that will build us any major scale. It goes whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So a whole step is two frets, and a half step is one fret. And if I do that sequence of half steps and whole steps, it gives me my C major scale, and it gives me these notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now in music, what we do is we give every single one of those notes its own number. And we don't just write it as a normal number, we write it as a Roman numeral. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After that, we give every single one of those notes its own chord. So the first note there gets its own chord. We give it a major chord, all right? Major chords will get an uppercase Roman numeral, but the second note, we're going to give it a minor chord, and that means we're going to flip that Roman numeral to be a lowercase Roman numeral. So the second note gets a minor chord, the third note gets a minor chord, the fourth and fifth note both get major chords, the sixth note gets a minor chord, and the seventh note gets a diminished chord. Now in this video, I'm going to completely skip the diminished chord. I don't even want to talk about diminished in this video. That's a really deep topic that goes way past just writing cool poppy chord progressions. So for our purposes today, we're really only using the six chords of the key of C, and we're going to ignore that seventh chord. Those six chords are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, and A minor. And you can hear those sound fantastic together. But here's where the real magic comes in. If I want to write a chord progression in the key of C, here are the three simple rules that I want to place on you to write a chord progression. Number one, make sure that we're writing four measures of music. I think four is a great place to start. I don't want to start with five measures. It's kind of hard to write a five measure progression. But if we just stick with four, we'll be in pretty good shape. Our next rule is to make sure that we're starting on the one chord. Today, that would be C major. We're in the key of C, that is my one chord. So I have to start on my one chord. The last rule is that the very last measure needs to be either my four chord or my five chord. That would be either an F chord or a G chord. And with those simple rules, I can literally just guess at anything and get a great sounding chord progression. Here's what I mean. I'm starting on one. Pick any note between one and six. I'm going to pick three, okay? My three chord, you can see, is an E minor. So if I'm going to go from C, I'm going to go to an E minor. Let's pick another chord. I'll go two. Two is D minor. And now I have to do a four or five at the end. And let's try the four first, the F, okay? So let's play that chord progression again. I had C. I had E minor, I had D minor, and then I had F. And I think that sounds pretty nice. If I give it a strumming pattern now, let's take a listen. Yeah, I think that sounds great. So what if I did the five chord at the end instead? All right, so let's do the exact same thing, but this time, instead of ending on an F chord, I'll have a G major at the end instead of an F major, okay? Here's the one, three, Two, five. Do you hear that sounds a little bit brighter, a little bit bolder? That's why I want you to use the four chord or the five chord at the end. Going from the four chord to the one chord is called a cadence. You can hear going from four to one kind of gives you this soft landing back to my one chord. And going from five to one gives you this really strong landing back to my one chord. So by putting a four chord or a five chord at the end of my measure, it kind of makes you want to come back to repeat the chord progression on one again. So by making sure you're starting on one and ending on four or five, you'll always be setting up this 
kind of infinite chord progression loop. And literally, we can do anything in between those two chords. Let's try something different. I'm starting on C again. And this time, I'll go to the sixth chord, which is A minor. I'll go to the five chord, and then maybe just stay on the five chord. All right? I said, I, ha I mean, there's no rule against doing a chord twice in a row. So let's do this again. I had one, six, and five. Stay on five. Again, it's one, then the six, and then the five, and then maybe the four. All right, and I'm literally just guessing numbers out of random, out of thin air. Any chord I pick between one and six would work out. Now to make sure we really got the grasp of this, let's just do it all over again really quickly in the key of G. I'm gonna start on a G note and I'm gonna build my scale. I do a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, and that gives me the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Then I'm just gonna write in my Roman numeral formula underneath the scale and it tells me what chords I'm allowed to play. Once again, that uppercase Roman numeral means I'm allowed to play a G major. That lowercase Roman numeral means I'm allowed to play an A minor for my two chord and then a B minor a C major, a D major, and an E minor. And we are going to skip the F sharp diminished. Just in case you were curious, we'd actually have to play it as an F sharp half diminished, and it would sound like that. And it does actually resolve to the one chord. But like I said, advanced stuff, we'll talk about that in another video. I actually already have a video on diminished chords if you'd like to know a little bit more about the theory of just those. So let's follow our rules again. Let's set up four measures. We'll start with G. We'll make sure that we're ending with either C or D. And the only thing that I wanna maybe spice up a little bit today is I wanna do a split measure. I wanna take one of these measures and not just do one chord for the whole measure. I actually wanna divide it in half so we get like a quick change between two different chords, okay? So let's start on G major and we'll do a full measure. One, two, three, four. From there, let's try going to uh, the four chord. Two, three, four. And then let's go to the two chord, and then I'm gonna split that measure with the six chord. Just so just two strums on each one. So two strums of an A minor, that's my two chord, two strums of an E minor, that's my six chord. Then I wanna end with my five chord. One, two, three, four. So here's my full progression. I'm gonna go one, four, two, six, five. All right, now let's give it a strumming pattern. And that works pretty good. Also, you don't have to strum these things. What if I arpeggiated them or did like a picking pattern through each one? So here's my G, the C, A minor, E, D. All right, obviously think about this outside of your guitar. What would this sound like on a piano? Sounds like music. This is the kind of thing that was always elusive to me. I never knew, how do you just write stuff that sounds good? Well, you do it like this. You find out what your key is, you write some chords in that key, and you make sure that it kind of tails off at the end with a four or five chord to keep the whole thing looping. And boom, you're sounding musical. Now, if I wanted to do something on top of this, like sing or play a guitar solo, you can probably guess the notes I would sing or the notes I would play for a guitar solo come from the scale G major. When we were writing in C, I would obviously be playing and singing in the C major scale. So that's really what it means to play or to write in one key. Now, like I said, this is very limiting. This is very restricting. I'm putting these three rules on you saying you have to start here, you have to end on this, and uh, that's you don't really want to be writing your own soulful emotional music with these kind of rules in place. But I really do think this is a good place to start at least getting something that's musical. Ultimately, in a perfect world, you go sit down with your guitar and your emotions just pour out and the, your, your message comes out through your music. But you can't count on that. That's not something you can rely on. Uh, and when those moments don't happen, when you don't find that inspiration and when things don't just click in place, you kind of have to just brute force your, your, your way through things. And to just write something, whether you like it or not, just get something out there. And then maybe later on that will actually inspire something. Or maybe that's where the idea starts and you change it and modify it from there. But you really have to expect that songwriting isn't going to always be this natural process where, you know, the 
the, the waves come to you and you see the music and it just expresses itself instantly through. I mean, that does happen. And those are magical moments. And that's, those are probably going to be your best songs when it's effortless. But that's like, in my, for me personally, that's like 5% of my songwriting just is that effortless, thoughtless process. 95% of the other parts of it is just brute forcing my way through things that I think might work and then finding something that kind of works. And then later on, the, the idea really strikes and the inspiration strikes. And I can just throw away all my mechanics and my rules and I can just do what I'm hearing and do what I really want to do. So there's the very basics of it. Hopefully you get the idea that this is simple stuff. I mean, you really don't need to know much theory to start writing songs in different keys. What I suggest you do is write in every key. Write a song in E today. Write a song in F tomorrow. Write a song in F sharp the following day. Just so you really get an idea of, you know, what each one of those keys looks like on your guitar, what they look like on your piano if you're a piano player. If you do EDM or if you're interested in writing music on the computer, try to, taking the same stuff and programming in these chords as strings or synthesizers. It's very important to practice this stuff by, by using it, by writing with it. I mean, it should go without saying. That's how you get better at writing music is by writing more music. Now, a lot of my favorite songs go way past this bread and butter diatonic chord, only six chord choices. A lot of my favorite songs leave the key and they do interesting things that break the rules. But a lot of times when you break the rules, there's even rules for how you break the rules. So the next step for you, if you want to take this to the next level, is to start exploring secondary dominant chords. And uh, those are chords that are outside of the key, but they will take you to chords that are in your key. And you can also start looking into borrowed chords, which are chords that come from the parallel modes of the key that you're in. So you would want to know about your modes before you dive into that, but that will give you access to way more chords than just the six that I stuck you with today. Also keep in mind that songs can change keys, so you don't have to just write a song in the key of C major and keep it there forever. You're allowed to change keys. You are allowed to modulate in the middle of a song. So uh, just some ideas of taking this past this very, very restrictive rules uh, that I've given you here today. So I hope you enjoy this video, and more importantly, I hope you realize that songwriting is actually something that anyone can do. They just have to learn the rules and practice a little bit. Then once you've learned those rules and practiced, you're free to go crazy and put your own spin on things, put your own style on things, and really make it yours. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, all that good stuff, and I will plan on seeing you soon.